and we are recording again. So we are picking up from uh, we are picking up straight from the end of previous recorded session where I got carried away about all things uh, Ekurana Bigger Moon. No, I'm sorry, Ekurana Four and its Bigger Moon. And now we shall begin following our heroes again, the boys. <laughs> so the the boys are huddled in an undersea dwelling together with the locals who have saved the silly foreigners from the approaching storm because those mm -hmm. guys were diddle daddling about the coast and like, oh, we need to go there. Okay, go there then, but you need a transport. Oh, we think we will just walk. <laughs> Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> right. So now, now, now we are together with a bunch of sort of uh, poor coast people. Uh, think poor fishermen in a rather cozy, maybe smelly little settlement. Although it does have controlled air, so she doesn't pop into fire e any second and far outside on the surface there is a storm raging a seasonal storm and this is where we dun are dun 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 yes thoughts um it, i think just to pick up from here uh they they're in the undersea bungalow um they I think this is going to be a nice moment as well, where they're sort mm -hmm. of just like chatting and connecting with these people and uh, sampling the food, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's really cool, and I like how you've linked it back to like the food scribe as well. That's mm -hmm. you know, this like it's exactly what the I imagine the scribe order of Svalbard would be like if they find something that's relevant to another mm -hmm. scribe and they know it and they are in occasional contact with that other scribe. They would probably do everything they can to increase that other scribe's knowledge mm -hmm. um, and add to the collective library that they've mm -hmm. got going on. Yeah, even uh, even if it is not uh, I in the scope of their current mission, mm -hmm. because yeah, definitely. yeah, because technically uh, our scribe or Steve uh, is currently technically he is working, technically he is doing field work because uh, Nali technically hired him although mm -hmm. re really they are just working together uh, because yeah. common interest ah but the, there's another idea that I had with this is that uh, uh, when, uh, when Nali and Scribe first approach uh, these locals uh, on the beach or whatever or on the uh, barren lava fields that make up the coast of this inner sea, <laughs> grey upon grey. Uh, uh, then, uh, at first, uh, when the people haven't noticed them yet, uh, they speak in their own language, uh, which will be mine to compile, uh, which would be the quote-unquote space Estonian. And as, and the moment that these people. Uh, notice the strangers. Oh, and uh, the important part is that uh, uh, neither Nollis nor Scribe's uh, earworm is able to translate uh, their local speak. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's up? What's up with this? Uh, is your earworm working? Yeah, it's it's working, but it's only giving me errors and fragments. Like, I don't think this this language is in the database at all. Uh, so uh, as as they get uh, obviously into earshot, the people notice them, and immediately they switch to standard galactic. I was like, "Oh, howdy! <laughs> you come here often." <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, uh, there will be like a bit of a private speak. Like, uh, look look at those two idiots. <laughs> uh, oh, I think they can hear us now. <laughs> and and then like, howdy, stranger. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, I was thinking that uh, while they are huddled uh, in in the huddled in with the locals, uh, then as they 
describe what they're doing, what's their mission, and describe describes a, a little bit about uh, his current state. Uh, then the locals uh, sympathize with them and teach him a little bit of their language, and and they teach him the quote unquote uh, uh, secret handshake, and uh, like the. Uh, the normal, uh, I wouldn't say normal conduct, but like the designed custom or the, the, the custom that has been cultivated deliberately is that you're supposed to uh, bring more people into the community so young, young people are encouraged uh, to uh, court people outside uh, their own people but then uh, they should bring the children uh, to learn the language. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that's that's like a big thing. That's that that's basically how they uh, how how this particular group is keeping the language and the culture alive is by pr uh, sort of uh, subtly adding people in mi mixing new people into their community. So they're. Their, their strategy is not to breed more, uh, but to integrate more, or to sort of uh, indoctrinate might be too strong a word, but make more people of their own. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 now the, the scribe sort of uh, gains some of some of that knowledge from them. Uh, what was the thought? Uh, oh, uh, I think. This is where the Svalbard connection might become relevant. So, is that uh, if some of these folks uh, would remember uh, back in the day when uh, maybe somebody still lived on the planet and the life on the planet was still good before the quote-unquote civil war, uh, uh, they can they could remember uh, the local militia who had the unit scribes. Uh, and some of those might have been trained at Svalbard. So basically, when uh, uh, when scribe mentions Svalbard, then somebody's like, "Oh yeah, I have heard about that." <laughs> mm. Like uh. my my grandma was a scribe with the uh, with the forest unit, and and she was the scribe a scribe that ever scribed, and she <laughs> trained at Svalbard. So that that sort of thing. <laughs> So it's a it's a thing of a past. Uh, so so basically, this is uh, this is where I am trying to tie in uh, this reality storyline with uh, the base camp storyline a little bit, and and of course the base camp storyline is chronologically uh, behind of these events. So uh, it could easily be that some people over there, some people in my stories. Uh, who have the skills uh, comparable to uh, to this story? It might very well be that some some of those uh, some of those local scribes have been uh, trained at Svalbard, and uh, so that name means something uh, for the locals. So even th even though those times are now just a memory, uh, it is a strong memory. <laughs> So this uh, this wouldn't it be. Hmm? It all connects. Yeah. So this wouldn't be like a huge plot point, but it would be a little bit of world building nugget. Mm. Of course, uh, later on, it can become. Uh, yeah. This is uh, this is where I re I remember yesterday I was trying to make another connection uh, between Jewel and Smith. So, uh, if Scribe learns some local doodads here now, then later, uh, when Scribe and Nali and Joel are working together, uh, it might easily be that uh, either Scribe just uh, transfers some of this information to Joel, or maybe uh, they run into somebody 
uh, who speaks the language and scribe is able to make contact with them because of the uh, quote unquote secret handshake and then he uh, he gives he gives that knowledge to to Nali and 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 Jewel as well and then even later uh, when Jewel and Smith uh, encounter each other uh, then uh, not only uh, will Jewel mention uh, the whole Harper rescue plan of secret bases and uh, and what have you secret bases secret resources so th this will be like spark one for uh, uh, for the corrupt Smith's uh, crazy plan and then the second part would be that uh, Jewel is aware uh, of what's happening uh, at the uh, uh, 4 and and this bigger moon. So so basically, this this knowledge uh, directly links to the uh, events of uh, of base camp. So it's like uh, the bad Smith didn't just come up with uh, with all that uh, from scratch, uh, but uh, but there were certain things uh, she heard from Jewel that. Uh, that sparked some ideas in her head, so when things went really bad, she reignited those sparks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I have, I have veered into my own story! <laughs> 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 but yes, in, in this particular reality, time is farther ahead in the timeline. Uh, those events are not attainable. So over here, bad things have happened to these people and this land, and and all they have are memories, which they now share with Scribe and Nolly. Um, if I were handling this, and feel free to disagree. Yeah. If I were handling this, I imagine uh, Scribe um, probably is. Does, does he visually record things as well? Like, I know he audially records things occasionally, like when he makes logs for uh, himself. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I would think that the logs are not just audio. The, the logs also include... Uh, so it's multimedia. Uh, I think any, any sort of information that he uh, deems worthy to storage gets added to the log. So he might have his, uh, uh, his voiceover but he would also have uh, images, uh, moving images, thermal images, smell of vision samples. So, so, so I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't restrict the, the reports or the uh, gathered data to any particular format. My, my potential thinking was um, that to bring Jewel up to speed, mm -hmm. Scribe might share some of that media with her directly. Um, but I don't know. I mean, this is uh, the the the, the thing the thing here is not about uh, showing the thing unchanged. So the, the the point here is learning. The point here is that uh, he actually learns uh, some of that language and he actually mm -hmm. learns some of uh, some of those sayings. So, uh, and it might even be that these people request no recording, because ah. that because because that is also uh, that would be the condition that they teach him, uh, because they are trying to. So on one hand, they are trying to add more people to their stock, but on the other hand, they don't want their uh, knowledge to get. Uh, widely wide in the open for those who are not in the know mm -hmm. so so it's it's like it's this uh, contradicting uh, contradicting goals in in their customs so on one hand they are trying to uh, keep their inf information spreading to the uninitiated but at the same time uh, they are trying to uh, they are increasing the si the stock of the initiated uh, so so yeah, I, I would I would think that while Scribe is free to look around, uh, take images, maybe they even give him uh, some recordings of their own, uh, like with stories and and, and such. Uh, 
but I would think that they they would request the uh, scribe not to uh, not to share not not to send this uh, this knowledge about their language into some bigger database. Mm -hmm. Okay, so original idea bad, but the point about them requesting scribe not record it is is good. I like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but yeah, when it comes to Scribe passing this, uh, sharing this knowledge with Nali and Jewel as well, I would think that this would have to be genuine learning, not just showing them a video about something. So it's like, uh, and uh, this is something that might need a little bit of expanding in the Scribe and the Doctor part, but uh, but basically. Uh, Every scribe has this skill to memorize stuff as a sort of backup plan. Mm -hmm. So, so they they do have the capability of not uh, memorizing too, but also learning things. So they are like they are like living depositories. <laughs> and and there's another aspect to this. I'm thinking now. Uh, because right now Scribe still carries the memorized uh, materials with him uh, then learning something new would also be a nice way of distracting from overthinking those materials so so basically he he is looking for uh, new information everywhere just to keep himself from thinking about uh, that list too much mm -hmm. little personal information nugget there. I don't feel we've stepped forward very far in the story. <laughs> we've established a lot of sort of like background uh -huh. important character stuff. Yeah. Uh, knowledge, connections, that sort of thing. So while it might, while we haven't really populated any more pages, we've gone through a lot of relevant information. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so I, I would think that uh, whatever takes place during that storm and during these chats this is uh, essentially a tangential forest <laughs> which uh, sort of lives its own life and eventually we will have to decide how much of it actually uh, makes it into the current story but uh, that's that's where a lot of connections get shown and and some world building stuff gets uh, gets uh uh, demonstrated. Would, would, I might be jumping ahead a little bit here, but would they send a guide to go with Gnarly and Scribe? Uh, I think so. Like, either... either uh, okay, this can... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking two possibilities here. So one possibility is that these locals uh, don't know about uh, that person of interest and they will give a guide and or a vehicle that will take the boys uh, to the destination mm -hmm. where, where they will inquire further or uh, these guys actually know uh, that this person of interest is dead and uh, as the storm passes and it's time to move on then they will brief the guys and like yep you have no point going there anyway because dead uh, and instead uh, they will provide help uh, for them to get back to the port and continue on with their mission at which point at which point we will skip to the uh, upper part of the elevator uh, space elevator slash uh, port structures uh, when the guys are already ready to board their ships and this is where they will discuss how uh, how Scribe can't bear to be alone uh, so it's uh, if, he, if he could please uh, uh, crash with Nali instead mm -hmm. so far I'm leaning more on the first option mm, okay like, I like the idea of them actually going to this place and asking questions and such mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and the guide would uh, might be able to get them into places where they otherwise might not be able to get to so the, mm -hmm. the, the guide might know whom to ask and uh, 
and, and do stuff. And uh, an additional note, this is again something where Nali might step in with his uh, uh, techno, uh, techno sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, he might win these people over again by helping to fix something or, or, or get something to work or enhancing something. Which I imagine this far out would be like a big thing. Like if, mm -hmm. so if one of their vehicles is broken down, like that's a massive inconvenience being this far out. Yeah, um, that could even be that uh, the guys will try to recruit help or rent uh, rent a vehicle to get to their destination and the, uh, the other people are like yeah we would love to but uh, uh, but this this uh, capacitor is busted so we can't fly this thing and Nali's eyes just light up and like <laughs> really <laughs> uh, uh, if I if I fix it will you will you take us there yeah like see now I love this 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 sounds exactly the sort of road I want to travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and jumping ahead uh, to the next, next, next phase, uh, I would think that over here, uh, he this approach works really well. But when they get to Archaeus 4 and Nali tries his, uh, oh, let me let me fix that for you routine with the city. Uh, bottom level street people, they're like, fuck you! They're like, what are you, some sort of a spy? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good thing actually, we're sort of setting a theme up that Gnarly is uh, every situation uh, where it's applicable, he's sort of He's, but it's how he ingratiates himself to people. It's how he yeah, like yeah, yeah. So he right. he tries to he would try to do his his thing everywhere, and mm -hmm. and up to a point it works, it works, it works, and then it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh yes, and I think that's going to be interesting to see that as mm. well. So I think I think we're on thread. Uh, they uh, potentially gnarly does this thing repairs this vehicle, they guide, go to this settlement, uh, ask some questions, and then, uh, jumping ahead a little bit, mm -hmm. they are then back at the spaceport going up in the mm -hmm. elevator. I love the scene where they're in the sort of space elevator and describe to talk to Nali and mm -hmm. they're being quite frank with one another. I think that's going to be a nice scene. Yeah. Um, and then they get back to the ships, and I guess they... Do they depart then, or do they stay there and just do a bunch of research? Uh, I think to do the research, they will have to depart the port, and they will sort of get in, get further into space to be free of the moon's interference. Mm -hmm. Right. Although while they're already on the ship, that's that's not that much of an issue. Uh, so they go through the information a little bit more. They come across. Oh, they do their research into the other people and find out that they are also dead slash mysterious. Uh, okay, and important point, this is not an instantaneous thing. No. So, yeah. so to to find out about uh, the next people they might they might be considering in the list, there will be uh, s several curies, and this is this is where we circle back to the. Uh, world building episode about uh, data exchange and all that so uh, getting gathering that information and asking around about those people that will take time yeah 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 but essentially after, a, after some time they do whistle the list down yeah, but let's let's not okay. uh, let's not go let's not uh, re uh, uh, what's the word re outline the stuff that we have already outlined. So okay, right right yeah. right now we're we're still down on this moon and we're dealing with this moon stuff. So mm -hmm. the jumping a jumping ahead is only only useful for now uh, as it connects 
to what they're doing now, but I don't I don't want to uh, get to the end of the book right now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair enough. I think uh, my problem is I like to try and see the bigger picture uh, constantly, but we've done this bigger picture thing like three or four times now. I don't yeah, know. the 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 H is silent. The bigger picture picture is silent. Uh, but yeah, uh, back to this uh, situation, mm, when it comes to iterating text, I would think that once they have, uh, once they have found out about uh, their mark or the person of interest here, from there, uh, we will indeed cut to the spaceport already, because we don't have to uh, because the way back to the spaceport works well, so we don't have to iterate every step on the way. We would just say that uh, they were able to make their way back, mm -hmm. and uh, and from there, uh, uh, from there, that's that's uh, where the next situation starts. <laughs> it basically writes itself. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna uh, finish up this recording here. Yeah. Uh, if anybody was watching us, thank you. We might meet again some other day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.